So at this time, I'm going to introduce Mark Naster of Hill, Hillcrest Transitional Living and tell you how much we appreciate you being with us today. And we are eager to hear what you have to teach us and, and uh, um, be able to work with us. Thank you. Well, thank you, Deb. I'm really surprised. I'm looking at Angelo's picture and it, I don't know who the artist is, but they did a pretty good job. So um, thanks for coming. It's, it's lunchtime. So enjoy your lunch and we'll have some fun. Um, it's really funny when every year when I put my taxes together and I ask you for your occupation and um, I didn't think it was appropriate to put professional networker because uh, my role uh, in, throughout my career has been developing relationships with people and and we're going to talk about that. You know, when uh, Tim DeWee spoke from the uh, Johnson County uh, Mental Health Services, when he talked about different ways for us to uh, get through this unprecedented time um, and, and survive. And, you know, one of the things that I looked, you know, as I was, I did this program last year uh, in a, for another chamber. And, and one of the things that I looked at was I've been networking with people since I was 22 years old. You know, um, I, I looked at my career just to share a couple things with you. I was an officer in the Marine Corps for six years. I worked for Ross Perot in one of, as one of his recruiters at EDS. I went to Marion Labs and was the recruiter and then ended up being the global director of HR planning and development. Um, I got to work with Mr. K, then I did consulting. Then I decided to get away from the corporate world and actually worked in retail at the Sharper Image over at Town Center for three years. Then I worked with the Kansas City Wizards soccer team um, as they were transitioning. Then seven and a half years with Habitat for Humanity then helped a couple of other nonprofits. And I look back and I'm going, what have I done? And what have I learned? And what have I, what have I personally gained from this? And, and what it is, it's, it's building relationships. That's what it's all about. You know, I'm not gonna badmouth any sales training people, but what it boils down to is People do business with people that they can trust. You know, um, people, they want to do business with people that are excited about what they do. They're excited about their product, their service. When people hear me talking about Hillcrest transitional housing, they, they, they sense a, a passion and they sense an excitement about what I'm doing. And it's true. And you can tell the people that are fake. And so, can you name the last time you bought anything over the phone or when somebody showed up at your front door and you cannot stand the kids' school stuff and Girl Scout cookies? That doesn't count. When was the last time you bought anything from anybody over the phone or when they showed up at your front door? And why not? You don't know who they are. You don't know if you can trust them or not. And so that's the whole key to building a relationship is building trust with people. And it's a choice we make, you know, when you say, do I trust somebody? Are they keeping their word? Are they, are they, do they do what they say they're going to do? So, and it's a lifelong organic process that we go through and being able to trust people. And you need to be doing more listen when you're talking with people you need to do more listening. And to me, it's about getting to know who the person is. I, you know, want to, you know, please, if, you know, if you want to, this is not just a monologue. So please share some of your experiences with me that, as we go through this. But when I meet somebody for the first time, sometimes I can be a little in, aggressive and I go, who are you? And, and it's interesting, most men will give you their job title because that's what men do. Great book by Gail Sheehy, who wrote the book Passages back in the late 80s. She wrote a book called Men's Passages. 
She said 90% of the time, if you ask a man, who is she, who is, who are you, they will give you their job title. So I want to get to know the person. Who are you? Um, I don't want to know what you do. I don't know how to know your job title. I don't even want to know anything about your company right now. I want to get to know you. I want you to get to know me. And that's one of the first things, you know, and, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more in detail as, as we talk about networking and what it is and what it isn't. Uh, but I'm always interested in getting into somebody's other, their 95%. Who you are, who are you? What's important to you? What are your values? And I don't get into that level of detail right at the beginning. It's just like dating. You're building a relationship. And so when you when you start getting to know some, you know, um, and, and as time goes on, your business relationships can become, or your personal relationships can become business, but primarily your business relationships can become personal. And I look at the people here. I've known Stoney for a, the old Marine Corps expression since Christ was a corporal. Uh, and, you know, Kent, Kent and I go back a number of years and the people that I've gotten to know through this chamber and through all my other relationships, I'm humbled that through business, I have developed these kinds of relationships. And then people then understand who I am what I represent, and if they believe in that, then they get involved, like with Habitat for Humanity. You know, everybody knows about Jimmy Carter and what he did, but why would somebody get involved with Habitat? It's the same thing with Hillcrest. Very noble, what we're doing, incredibly. But if somebody isn't, if you don't believe what I'm saying or trust me because you don't know who I am, I'm just passing on a business card. You know, there is a, I won't mention it. I won't mention it. We'll talk about it in a few minutes. But um, handing out business cards is not networking and it's not building a relationship. We're talking about bottom line and it's, and it's no different than, than looking for a long-term personal relationship. You're looking for a mutually beneficial relationship. What is mutually beneficial? What can I do to help you? What can you do to help me? So at this point, I'm not going to, I'm going to beat this to death. Okay. If you don't mind, I've made notes, so I'm going to be referring down to them. So let's talk about networking. What is it and what isn't it? It's not speed dating. It's not instant selling. Unfortunately, there are people that go to networking events or they go to a BNI or they go to an ACA meeting or they go to some other, they go to chambers and they show up and they think that they're going to sell you right there on the spot and it's gonna increase business. Networking is only a tool. It is only a tool. And it's not just an activity or it's an event, it's, 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 it's become systemic in the way you are as a person. Who are you in trying to, if you're truly interested in building a relationship or getting somebody to buy your product or service or what you do, if you don't have a relationship with them, they're not gonna buy, right? Right? So is it natural to be a network, to do networking? And, and networking is really building relationship. Is it natural? Not for all people. And you know, there's, there's certain aspects of doing these events virtually that I personally have found to be extremely beneficial. Is, is I look at, at some of the folks that are attending today and had, had I gone to, a, you, we tend to, when we go to the events in person, we tend to gravitate to people we know. But these virtual events have given me the opportunity to meet people, tell our story about Hillcrest, getting to know them as people, their families, their interests that I wouldn't have gotten in some of the face-to-face. -face. And, I, and I, I miss the hugs, don't get me wrong. 
I miss being together with people, but I also get a chance to meet people that I wouldn't normally meet. So it's not normal for a lot of people to be able to open up in a face-to-face -face setting unless they know somebody. So the virtual networking can be the more positive way of getting to know somebody without the stress of the face-to-face, -face, okay? So what's your comfort zone? When I talk about building relationships with organizations or with people, um, it's a matter of, I'm, I'm a planner. I was telling Deb uh, prior to the starting, when it comes to painting the kitchen or paint or doing something constructive, I have a plan and I plan and I do my research. And thank God for YouTube because it helps you how to find and how to do things now, All right? So I plan. When, before you go and start networking, you got to start doing some research. And there are so many tools available. God, I remember there are a few of us here that are in that category before emails, before the internet. How did you research? You had to go to the library. And you get a hold of the Kansas City Business Journal. Or you would buy the Kansas City Business Journal's annual book, huge book. And it would tell you what companies are successful and it would give you contact in this. In today's world, you have, a, you have the knowledge at your fingertips through the chambers, through professional associations, through Google, through YouTube, through a variety of things, but people don't use it. And you know, when it comes to getting to know, for instance, networking is not just about an event. So let's just say I, I uh, found out that an organization likes to, likes to do community service projects. And I found the name of the person. So you know what I do? I go to LinkedIn. And I look them up. Or I Google their name. I want to find something. And this is all genuine. This is not made up. This is not false. I want to find something that we have in common that I can talk to them about. If I found out they went to KU, I went to KU. A lot of times I find out that they were veterans. There's something we can talk about is because I was a veteran. Um, did they grow up in Kansas City? You know, one of the standard lines, um, a great way to break the ice when you're when you're meeting somebody for the first time is, you know, where'd you grow up? And, you know, the standard thing in St. Louis or Kansas City is where'd you go to school? Where'd you go to high school? You know, and and that breaks the ice, at least to get to as you're getting to know that that person a little bit better. But you may not know that or you may have something in common with them. If you go to their LinkedIn profile, you can actually see where they went to school, where they work you may know somebody that they may have worked with. That will at least give you the opportunity to start building that rela personal relationship from there. But most people, they just start talking about their product. And the bottom line is, and one of the things that Tim DeWeese talked about, let me make back to my note on him. Um, one of the ways to feel good about what we're going through is the gratitude of helping others. And one of the things that I've really loved about working with the various chambers and being an ambassador or being involved in a committee or volunteering is to get to know people, is, is the opportunity to help somebody. Now this may sound really trite, but I've worked a couple of golf tournaments this year, volunteered with golf tournaments for the various chambers. And my responsibility is to, to volunteer, to watch, to see if they got a hole in one. So I could have sat there in my chair and just sat there and said, nope, nobody got a hole in one. But I would go down to the green and show them where their ball went. Because I was helping them. And it made me feel good. I was helping them. But then they said, well, what do you do? And one time I volunteered and I didn't have my name tag on. 
And then I told them about what I did and I found out about what they did and we followed up. But it all started by me helping them find out where their damn ball went. One time it almost hit me on the head. So it was really frightening. But uh, so as we go forward, let me pull up some other thing. It's the, the gratitude, you know, if you really want to build relationships and build your network from a business standpoint, you got to get out. Now, what does that mean? That means there are so many different ways. I've got a list of them. I'm going to go through them. But it's like when you're out, good things happen. And in the pandemic, we've been really restricted on being out. But it also means that when you are out, where it's, what's the opportunity? Now, this may sound, again, really goofy. But when I'm out and when I was with Habitat, I'd always wear my name tag. When I went grocery shopping, I would wear my name tag or a polo shirt. And you know what? I'd be standing in line checking out before social distancing. And someone would say, oh, tell me about your restore. Oh, I worked on one of the Habitat homes. I'd like to do that again. Opportunity to share. That's a small relation. That's a networking opportunity. And I'm gonna talk about all the different things but make the time to get together with people. And if you can't get together with people, you know, YouTube is great and this is going to be recorded and people can go to it. But there's nothing like, and I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, Kent and I know each other and, and we're chamber brothers. I call us chamber brothers because we're all members of the same chambers and I get to see him. I actually got to see Kent in person two weeks ago. It's like I wanted to hug him, but I couldn't, obviously. We were wearing our mask. We were outside, though. <clears throat> don't make an excuse. I don't have time. <laughs> Let's say you lose business. You find time. And you know what, during the pandemic, if I can talk to somebody and I've met a couple of folks through this chamber that, um, and we had a little session with uh, Roberta and uh, Kathy, and it was like, we, we actually got out. We weren't in this little group, but it was so much, it was so enjoyable just to get out and learn about what they're doing and them learn about me and learning about each other. And, and it was very gratifying. And I felt like and now I can help them. And that's part of what Tim talked about. The other thing he talked about is unplugging. I don't know about you, but I don't watch the news anymore. I, I watch it, when I go, before I go to bed, I'm watching the Golden Girls. It's, I go to bed with a smile on my face. But it's the, the really, he said, unplug. And if you don't have to be in an environment that is a negative environment, do so, you know, unplug from it. Okay, no excuse for not networking. Networking is involved. All right, I got a list of things, bear with me. Chambers of Commerce, membership directories. When was the last time you went to the membership directory when you were looking to build a relationship with a business? It doesn't have to be a virtual networking event. You can look it up. You can do your research and it'll have the name of the person and usually their contact information. A great source of networking. Social events. Well, hadn't been that way for the last, what, nine months, 12, 12 months, whatever the hell it is now. Post Super Bowl from last year. When things get, opened up again, social events, one of the greatest ways to network is you get in, get to know more about the people than what they do. And next thing you know, you know, um, civic organizations, professional networking events, ribbon cuttings, they're free. You don't have to register in most cases. And a lot of times, if you dead won't like this, I'm sorry, but other chambers have ribbon cuttings. 
find out where they are and go. You never, if there, it depends on, if it's a ribbon cutting for a business you might be interested in, you have the opportunity to meet the owners of that company, of that business. Ribbon cuttings are free and they usually have food. So that's why I go. Um, <laughs> people know me too well. Um, faith organizations, you just, you know, how many people, you, people have developed a relationship through their faith community, but from a business standpoint, next thing you know, you find out where this person w works. And because you built that, that, that spiritual relationship, it can transfer on over, but people don't necessarily, you don't go to church to build your business, but you can build your business by going to church. How do you like that one? That's just a new quote. You can write that one down if you want. Here's the one that I think is one of the greatest networking opportunities in the world. Kids, sporting, and kids' activities. Practices. What the heck? Of course, everybody's on their damn phone or their iPad now with the practices. But the opportunity to stand there on the sideline to get to know the other parents. And next thing you know, what do you do? Once you get to know them as people, what do you do? Oh, do you know such and such? No. Yeah, I do. Hey, could I've been wanting to get in contact with them. Could you, could you do an introduction for me? You've already built a relationship. They trust you. They know who you are. You've had their kids over to your house. You know, all of these little things. Kids' activities are one of the greatest ways to network, as far as my experience. Because you'll, you know, um, I ended up, my youngest daughter played on a premier soccer team. And one of the parents was the guy that ended up doing the design for HNTB when uh, Bruce Watkins um, Highway was built. But I was, at the time, I was wanting to get into HNTB and he got me an introduction. That's where it came from. Um, if you're veterans, there's a lot of veterans groups around. Again, a lot of things have been toned down, but still, there are still virtual, virtual events that, you know, I can tell you uh, here at my desk from the, uh, from the networking event uh, earlier this week, the Talking Tuesday, I have three, four different people's names written down with their contact information that I'm going to follow up with. A couple of them I already have. There's one other chamber. My wife's been looking about getting permanent eyelashes. I don't know why, but she does. And I was at a chamber event last week and a lady came on who has a business. And it's amazing how many personal things can be affect positively through your networking. Um, and I'm gonna go back to LinkedIn. And if, if you haven't already taken the opportunity to use LinkedIn when it comes to, you know, looking at people's backgrounds and building your profile in such a way that encourages people to connect with you. You know, you're just not gonna to want to connect with everybody else, but you want them to connect with you. Unfortunately, if you have an eclectic background like I do, I got people from that are veterans, former Marines, people that went to KU, people that went to the Shawnee Mission West, you know, they'll want to connect with you because there's that connect, that, that immediate relationship building discussion that I talked about. Um, the more people you interact with that you know, that you might be able to get an introduction somewhere is gonna help you tremendously. It, it's a matter of who do you know? You know, uh, what's interesting is when I first met Stoney, I was worth working with Habitat and he was at Westlake Hardware. And he, I got his name from somebody and I don't remember, but we started talking. And uh, how many years now, 10, about 
10 years, which developed into other relationships, which would help his business and it helped the organizations that I was with. It was just, that's exactly what it was all about. Um, who do you know? Somebody said, I said, who do you know at Westlake Hardware? Stony Bogan. Boom, look at where we are today. And I consider him a friend, not just a, a, a business colleague. Um, the things that have you have similar interests. Um, you know, one of the things, does anybody else here have a problem with remembering somebody's name when you first meet them? Yeah. I can remember faces very, very well, but names sometimes escape me. Um, my wife and I watch Ellen's game show on there and then you have to pull up a, at the end, the person to win a hundred thousand, you have to pull the person's, you have to identify the celebrity. I know their picture. I don't know their name. She always gets them right. I don't. And then sometimes the, the beauty, the beauty of a business card is instead of somebody volunteering their card, if you ask them for it, why? So you can remember their name. <laughs> And it's, I mean, look, we're human beings. We all have these, some of these, some of these each, I, I can remember people by face, but to remember their name is sometimes challenging. So recommendation, practice your memory skills as much as possible. I will tell you, there are two people that I have met. One of them I know knew very well. One of them I only met one time. That could remember a person's name a year out. And I'll tell you a quick story, if you don't mind. I was at Marion Laboratories, Mr. K. We would have Marion on the, we would have our Marion night at the stadium. We would take over the left field bleachers. And people would walk in and Mr. K and Blanche, who was his uh, bodyguard, were there. And uh, Blanche was a wonderful guy. And Mr. K would greet people. And he'd say, hi, who are you? and they would give you their name. They came back the next year, he remembered their name. You know who else can do that? Bill Self. Bill Self can do that. I was at an event and he was there as a kind of to attract people in. And Lorraine was there and I've got a picture with her and Bill Self because she just loves him. And the, we, for some another event he was at and he mentioned, and he mentioned her by name. Some people can do that. I can't. That's why I use business cards. Um, it's all about connecting. The, the new reality is that how do we stay in touch? And I'll tell you what I've done. I've used, I'm not in the Instagram and I'm not in the Twitter. I am in the Facebook. Why? Because us older guys, other people through past experiences through school through you know we tend to use that but companies use it as well and you know if there's a company that i'm supporting i will like and follow them on facebook because they see my name they know i'm supporting them and when someone comes in likes what, what I may have posted or shared about Hillcrest, I see the people that are supporting me. That builds a relationship with them. You know, it's real interesting. I was talking to, oh, I had to go over and help my middle daughter and husband. They thought they had some frozen pipes, but it was, we got it fixed. And they started talking about Valley View Bank. And I said, you mean security bank? Well, quite frankly, I wasn't a mayor of all the transition, but in, in working with Kent over the last few years, I've gotten to know a lot more about security bank and what they're doing. Because my sons are, my son-in-law is a realtor. So I was helping him and possibly referring people to security bank, but I was also helping Kent. It's all about helping people. So Facebook, to support the ads, I know we get a lot of ads in social media. 
that you got to support them, show interest, like them, make a comment. They see your name. You're, if you want to continue to build that relationship, you want to keep your name in front of people. So continue to do that. Um, share a post. Somebody, somebody posts about, uh, for instance, Angelo and what Pinnacle is doing. If they're looking for a specific type of person and they were to post something on social media, you're damn straight, I'm going to share that because I'm gonna support Angelo and I may support somebody else that may be looking for a position. The opportunities, what Faith is doing at uh, the Parks and Recreation, I'll like that, I'll share that to help Faith because I've gotten to know her and know what she's doing, but I also support Johnson County Parks and Rec. These are the little things you can do in today's world where you can't get together with people. Um, Instagram and Twitter, Twitter, and in also on Facebook, stay away, do not, I mean, have no political stuff at all. Because the, in today's world, if even if you were to post something positive about what you consider to be positive, some other people won't, they would put you in a negative light. And, you know, like, like right now, people are having a hard time in family relationships when there's different sides of ideology or political uh, interest. Stay away from that stuff totally. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Um, oh, if you're in a certain business, I help my son-in-law with this. I told you he's a realtor. Um, I, I said, you know, Brett, you might want to help some of your potential clients by providing them information on things around their house, like smoke detectors. How often should you replace a smoke detector, especially in being stuck at home and everything? All the different things that, that could be of value. They'll remember your name. Why? Because you want to help them. Which reminds me of, of uh, when I talked about the gratitude that Tim DeWeese talked about and helping people. We watched an interesting movie. I think it was on Netflix called The Secret Dare to Dream. And it was, uh, I've got a copy of it. I, I was gonna, possibly going to show it, but I'm not going to show it. Uh, but it was a little scene with uh, Katie Holm is a, a single mother, she's a widow. Sarah's nodding her head, have you seen the movie? Well, her house was damaged by a hurricane and this gentleman showed up and I'm not gonna take away the, the, the whole plot, but this gentleman shows up and wants to help her. She's got a big hole in the roof and he was gonna help fix it. And the most beautiful line that I've ever heard was she says, why do you want to help me? And he said two words, no, three words, because I can. And when you think about building relationships with people and people would say, why would you want to help me? Or do you want to help me? Or can I? Because I can. One of the great uh, members of the Northeast Johnson County Chamber, Linda Adams, is working with a nonprofit and she called me. She says, could you provide some insight in what a nonprofit and some of the nonprofit issues? Da, 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 da. And I, I love doing, helping that. And it's like, people would say, well, I, I do a lot of work with, because of my background in helping people still look at careers and career counseling. And it's like, well, why do you wanna help me? And my answer is always, and it will be in the future because I can. And, as, and I'm doing that out of sincerity, not to just get through it because it's gonna help me in business. It's helping me as a human being. It's helping me get through this damn pandemic and it's helping me feel good about the kind of life that I'm living. Um, one other thing is uh, video conferencing. I know we're getting tired of it. 
I, I miss the human touch. I'm trying to think of the song. Oh, I know what it was. It's by the Spice Girls. You, you remember that one? Da, 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 with a human touch. Do, do, with. But we all miss that. I miss it. But I can see your faces. And a lot of people don't put their pictures up there. I mean, I've got faith and I'm Angelo and I get to see them all the time. But I mean, I do a workshop with a women's employment network and people don't have their pictures up there. I can't see their faces. I need to see their faces. Um, the go-to meetings, Microsoft Teams. There's a new thing I saw advertised on TV last night. Uh, Slane TV is now setting up an opportunity for, let's just say Deb and I wanted to watch the same television show together. Sling TV is allowing people to do that. I, I'm not gonna pay that money just to do that. I don't need to watch the Avengers movies with my grandkids, I'll just get together with them. Um, so the video conferencing is good. Cell phones, I hate voicemail. Um, but cell phones are great. You can even do FaceTime. Uh, and just just to say hi and keep up to date and keep, you know, it doesn't have to be a specific event. You want to get together with somebody and get to know them better. And I'm more interested in the person than what they do. I, I just am. And this is the way I'm humbled at the number of people that people say, I've heard them say, Mark knows everybody. Talk to Mark Nastor. He knows everybody. I don't know everybody. I'm humbled by that. But it's all a matter of caring. It's a matter of building those relationships through showing people I can help. It becomes a mutually beneficial relationship. We were honored that Hillcrest Transitional Housing was nominated as one of the nonprofits of the year. And when Stoney called, let me know that we were nominated and it was an honor. And I asked the question, a year and a half ago or two years ago, how many people at Northeast Johnson County Chamber knew that Hillcrest Transitional Housing even existed? It's about networking. It's about building relationships. I care about the people that I interact with and I care about if I can help somebody. I know I'm being redundant, so um, I know, are there some questions in chat? Oh my God. You know, it's interesting. Um, I love everything that you've said. And I think that the chamber, we really do try to put out there what you're saying works. I'm gonna tell you that one of the things that we talk to potential members especially is we provide the opportunities for you to grow your business. Now it's up to you to figure out how to use those opportunities. And I think it goes along exactly with what you've been saying, Mark. And, you know, I, I'm a, a true believer. When I was with Habitat, we were a member of, I think, 10 different chambers. And, you know, I do all the cooking in the house and you say, well, what does that have to do with it? Because I tell my wife, you're on your own tonight. I've got a chamber event and they're going to have food. And as Kent knows, if there's food, I'm there, all right? The point is, is that people wouldn't have known about Habitat for Humanity. I had to make the time. You have to get out there. Chambers are a great, great source. This is one of the best. This is a great source. It's not the only source. You've also got to do your research. You've got to plan ahead. You've got to find out if, um, you know, I can tell you, that I did not know anything about Metro Electric. Now we thought we were gonna get a uh, uh, lose power for a little while. So we prepared. Guess what I had? All these little flashlights from Metro Electric. So when somebody says, I'm having problems with something in my house, Metro Electric, they charge by the hour, not by the project. I just did a commercial for them. How the hell did I know that? 
when it comes to all the different options, all the different people, the banks, somebody is looking to have an event and they're looking for some temporary help, call Anslo over at Pinnacle. I'm interested in getting involved in a nonprofit and I want to volunteer some time. Call Faith over at Johnson County Parks and Rec. I think Mr. Nolan wanted to say something. Kent, you want to jump in? Yeah, Jen. Kent. I, I did. I have a I have a question for you. You um you mentioned how uh, when at the in-person events that we tend to um to to go to the people that we know. And I find that um I go to to some events and everybody is kind of in their little cluster, click. their little click. Yeah. Um I'm just curious if you or, or anybody else has ideas or suggestions for how you would approach um, a group that you might want to talk to or engage with, um, especially if you're not an extrovert like you are. <laughs> um, if there's any ideas or suggestions that you have for for approaching, you know, these clicks. I, you know, I hear you, and um, I guess. You know what? I'll tell you a little secret. I'm not as an extrovert as everybody thinks. When I started doing my own consulting back in the late 90s, that's 1990s, not 1890s. Um, I would go to a Kansas. I went to the Greater Kansas City Chamber of Commerce event, and I would stand by myself. I didn't know anybody. I was feeling very insecure about myself. I don't belong with these people. I don't know who to talk to until I got over the fact that I was not going there to sell, but getting there to know people and to go up to a group and to say, hi. I mean, it's as bold as, as it, it's like, Going to a party and asking a girl to dance and you didn't, you know, and you're hoping to God she says yes. That same pit in your stomach. You do, you just got to do it. You go up, you go, how you doing? Who are you? <laughs> now that's me. Then I'll say, who are you? And next thing you know, we're talking. But I would say there are those organizations. I won't mention their names where those get-togethers, those in-person get-togethers to be very cliquish. And unless you, you know that who's in that click is somebody you want to talk to, that's your call, Ken. If I can jump in with something yeah, that um, please. has worked, uh, Charlie, that's my dog. Uh, if somebody came to the door. Um, I know I always try and look for somebody to make eye contact with. And once I do that, they usually will engage with me. And then I am so bold to ask them, I'm really new to this group. Would you mind introducing me to a couple of people that you know? But I think that eye contact is so important. And that's one of the things, again, I go back to what we know at our chamber meetings when we're able to be in person. We have so many ambassadors that work for us that when we see a new person walk in the door, immediately everybody knows that's a new person and we don't let them stand alone in a corner. We don't have to say anything. People will go over and get them and do exactly what I'm saying. Let me go around and I'll introduce you to some people. Eye contact and, and, and then help with introductions. Deb, great point. Every one of the chambers has a what they call diplomats or ambassadors. Find out who they are before you go to an event. Find out who those ambassadors are and look them up and tell them that you who you might be interested in meeting. And, and, and nine times out of 10, they will introduce you to somebody else. That can be a great way to break through. Connie made a great point. She says, sometimes these cliques have individuals in them because they're a lot like you and that, that aren't extro extroverts. And one of the, a group makes me feel comfortable and I need to approach, and I need others to approach me or for one of those individuals in the group to introduce me to. And there are, um, some people are, I won't go about chambers, but in all my experience that there's, a, there's people 
And when you know what in it, why be, why they become a clique? Because they're friends. Where did they become friends? At the chamber. You see how it it evolved for the first time. You know, at, at an event where they met this person, they found there's some commonality. There's found that they could. And then the more people you build in your little group, that's where, but I would just say, Kent, just go up and say hi. Kent, that was really give great. Give me your business you card, for... Kent. Just, just give me your business card. That, that'll just open it up the conversation. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate you jumping out there with that, Kent, because that happens more than we know. You know, you, you're making fun of the business card, Mark, and you've already addressed that. And we, we tell new members with our chamber, don't lead with your business card, because just like you said earlier, we want to get to know who you are. And then we want to know about your business and then we'll take your business card. But um, our, our chamber members are so used to building those relationships that you're talking about by leading with a business card. It's almost a turnoff. Yeah. We want to know you first. And, and you know, to, to kind of wrap it up as, we, as we're getting close to the end, you, building relationships is an ongoing activity. Uh, it depends on your personality. If you like people, which I do, I love people. I like to learn more about who they are, where they're from, their background. Gene Johnson knows my older brother really well through the Shawnee Mission School District. There's, there's a connection there. Uh, there's a connection with a lot of other people that I wouldn't have known Gene. I would know the name, but I wouldn't know him. And now we have a, a mutual connection. So when I see Gene, I ask him, he asks me about my brother and I tell him about my brother. It's kind of a neat thing. Um, but be, remember, do your research. If you're if, networking is not just about going to an event or doing a virtual event. It's about doing your research, getting to know what you what is it you're looking for. If you want to build a relationship, hey, people do it all the time now. They want to date somebody. They go online. Do it. How about you, the rest of Anybody have any questions that we want to ask Mark before our time is up? So Angela's finally on. What, what? Yep. Lunch must have been good, huh? Yes. Good. I figured I didn't want to have food dribbling down my mouth and <laughs> you guys laughing at me and not paying attention to Mark. So, <laughs> Mark, this was awesome. Oh, I think God, there were you like lots and lots of really good points that you've made. You know, one of the other things that you said at the very beginning is use your membership directory. There is a wealth of referrals and people that you can get to know. It was wonderful to have you join us today and and you do know everybody, so it only made sense <laughs> for you to come on and help us with our networking tips and as important relationship building and growing. 